Hi everyone, welcome to the 19th century here at Sailors Creek Battlefield Historical State Park. It's the site of the last major fight of the war in Virginia. It takes place on April 6, 1865, just three days before the surrender at Appomattox. My name is Ranger Lee Wilcox and today, as part of our popular Rocking Chair Reflection series of programs, we're going to deliver one that's titled Civil War Nicknames. It's a lighthearted look at some of the characters from the war, the nicknames they were tagged with, uh, and just like today, there's always a good story with a nickname, whether it be some sort of incident that happened in the individual's life or just simply a physical trait. So let's get going with right at the top, Ulysses S. Grant. General Grant had a variety of nicknames attributed to him. Uh, his name, Ulysses Samuel Grant, uh, garnered a uh, play off of his initials. Uh, U.S. Grant, uh, unconditional surrender Grant, based on his battlefield prowess and his ability to secure victories. Uh, his middle name, Samuel, uh, garnered the nickname by his troops who loved him as Uncle Sam, or just plain simple Sam. And then he had his detractors who twisted the name Ulysses into Useless Grant. Next up is uh, Robert Edward Lee, Robert E. Lee. Uh, just like Grant, he had several nicknames, uh, good and bad. Um, he was referred to as Mars Robert, which is a, uh, a slang version of saying master. Uh, he was also called the Old Man or Granny Lee. Uh, he could also be referred to as Uncle Robert. And by friend and foe alike, he was also referred to as Bobby Lee. Early on in the war, though, he got stuck with the nickname the King of Spades. He was put in charge of building the defenses around the city of Richmond, and that involved digging trenches as fortifications. And if you can imagine being troops out in the field, uh, the hard labor that's involved with digging various trenches to fight off an approaching enemy um, was not a popular thing and so he got tagged with king of spades a spade being a type of shovel used at the time and so king of spades from the deck of playing cards then we have stonewall jackson now stonewall popularly known he gets that nickname at the battle of manassas when general b who's trying to rally his faltering troops in the face of the enemy, he makes an observer observation that uh, he sees up on the hillside overlooking the battle is General Jackson. And he comments to his soldiers in an attempt to rally them by saying, look up there at General Jackson and his Virginians standing like a stone wall. And there you go, stone wall, it sticks. But there's other nicknames that are attributed to him over time. Uh, General Jackson was a very eccentric person. Uh, personality quirks were uh, prevalent. And so he was often referred to as Tom Fool, Tom being his nickname, Thomas Jackson, uh, Tom Fool stuck. Uh, another nickname that followed him around was uh, Old Jack. And then an, uh, a final nickname that uh, could be attributed to him was Old Blue Light. Uh, General Jackson had brilliant blue eyes, and it was often said by observers that were close to him during the heat of battle, it seemed like those eyes glowed even brighter. Uh, and so Old Blue Light stuck. Next up is uh, Abner Doubleday. Uh, he seemed to be in no hurry to get to the front line, especially when commanded to do so, and so he got stuck with the nickname Old 48 Hours, basically taking two days to get into action. This next fellow, William Henry Finch, French, I'm sorry, um, had the unfortunate nickname attributed to him because he had a tendency to blink uncontrollably whenever he spoke. And it was only when he spoke that this occurred. But the soldiers nicknamed him Old Blinky. It's terrible. And speaking of Blinky, we have this fellow, Edward Allegheny Johnson. I'll refer to the Blinky part a little bit later, but first up, Edward Allegheny Johnson. He gets the nickname Allegheny for early on in the war, uh, a battle of Allegheny Mountain, where she had great success. He also suffered an early on wound in his ankle that forced him to limp the rest of the war, and he carried a big hickory stick with him that he was used, known to use on troops that he felt were uh, uh, shirking their duties in combat, uh, known to uh, hit him with it. Uh, this hickory stick often uh, led to uh, grumbles and comments uh, against him, and he got stuck with the nickname Old Clubby as a result. This larger-than-life character, though, when not in battle, uh, was considered, um, uh, he's a 47-year-old bachelor, heavyset, a rude individual, 
But he also had this little uh, uh, quirk about him where he had an uncontrollable wink in one eye uh, that would happen on occasion. And so in society, at parties and whatnot, there were many controversies that came about with his presence from women folk who claimed that he was flirting with them because of this blinking eye. Then we have Richard Stoddart Yule, probably the most unoriginal nickname that can be attributed to somebody, but it's uh, Old Baldy for obvious reasons. Those that, that loved him, though, tried to polish this as best they could, uh, no pun intended, but uh, they tried to frame him as looking like an eagle because of his prominent nose and the bald head, and they said he had bulbous eyes that resembled that of a bird. So... It tried, but it didn't stick, the comparison to an eagle. Then we have Andrew Humphreys. Uh, speaking of bulbous eyes, uh, Andrew Humphreys, a federal general, uh, he had a prescription of glasses that he wore uh, to read letters and maps and whatnot, and the prescription was so strong that, kind of like what we call today Coke bottle glasses, um, he got tagged with the nickname Old Goggle Eyes. Next up is General James Longstreet. Uh, he was referred to as Pete, or Old Pete. Uh, that was a nickname given to him by his dad when he was a kid, working on the family farm. His dad observed that how rock solid he was of a person, um, even as a youthful person, um, and named him after the uh, Peter from the Bible, the rock of the church. And so Pete stuck, even though his name is James Longstreet, the nickname Pete stuck throughout the war, throughout the Mexican War, uh, uh, West Point. Uh, friends and foes on both sides who knew him called him Old Pete or just Pete. Uh, General Lee, who admired him so much and came to depend on him quite uh, heavily throughout the war as a, a, a brilliant field commander, called him his Old War Horse. Then we have Old Fuss and Feathers. This is Winfield Scott. He gets the name Fuss and Feathers because the fussy part is that he is a strict disciplinarian, um, attention to detail. But he gets feathers because he had a penchant for flashy uniforms, as can be seen here in this picture. Then we have General George B. McClellan, who Lincoln appoints at the outset of the war to command federal forces in Virginia. Uh, and he is called affectionately by his troops as a little Mac. Uh, he's a brilliant student of uh, war strategy. He even goes across over to southern Russia before the Civil War to uh, observe the war, the Crimean War. Uh, comes back home, takes the lessons he's learned. He's a brilliant strategist, organizer of military affairs, and he's tagged with a nickname as Young Napoleon or sometimes Little Napoleon. We're almost out of time here, uh, so for the today's segment, um, but we're going to end it on a note about an individual called Philip Sheridan, the brilliant cavalry commander, hated by some, loved by others. His nickname is not all that extraordinary, but he's referred to as Little Phil. But uh, the reason I want to spend some time with Little Phil here is that, you know, based on his nickname, he's not very tall. He's considered five foot six inches in height. Uh, but he had an unusual physique. Uh, his torso was longer than his legs, if you can imagine such a thing, and um, greatly admired by Abraham Lincoln as well as U.S. Grant. He's instrumental in bringing the war to a quick end once the retreat from Petersburg and Richmond takes place and ends at Appomattox. But um, what he's tagged with uh, in a description given to him by Abraham Lincoln, the Lincoln mentioned to some colleagues that Sheridan was the only person he knew that could scratch his ankles without bending over, if you can believe that. Um, and here, this is a man that loved him, giving him a description as that. Um, also, on the flip side, you've got General Grant, who also admired him. But Grant made the comment that because of his short stature, um, he never had a problem finding Sheridan in camp when he was, ever, when he was looking for him. Uh, of course, you can imagine the camp and the ground being soft, uh, especially after heavy rains, you're going to have a series of footprints everywhere. And if you're trying to track down somebody, you don't want to look at the footprints because the shoe prints are pretty much all the same. However, with Sheridan being so short, Grant made the comment that he never had a problem finding Sheridan in camp 
because there was a line next to his footprints drawn in the sand. That line being a result from his saber being so close to the ground that all Grant had to do was look for the footprints and where the saber was dragging, dragging the ground, and there you go. He could track down Sheridan. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation. Um, we've got a lot more personalities to go over, and we'll do that in part two of this rocket share reflection called Civil War Nicknames. Hope you come back. And until then, have a good day.